part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Worldwide, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. to the Krypton Report. I'm not going to read my huge intro because I'm getting over the flu and my name is Tyler. I have with me, so I don't have to talk as much, the great Mr. James Cole. Hey, hey, hey. And so that James doesn't have to just talk by himself because I'm getting over the flu, I decided to drag our good friend Levi back. Welcome, Levi. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, better than I have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard much from, I haven't heard much from Tyler this week. Normally we're we're talk, talking every day and I spent so much he's time been with, down. <laughs> I've spent so much time like you know, usually when I'm sick I, I send out the joking like picture of Dean Kane with the uh you know watch Kryptonite poisoning. But this time it was Christopher Reeves with the Kryptonite poisoning, sun poisoning from Superman four. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like I'm like, Yeah guys, hopefully I make it, fellas. Uh, but there's been some news, so let's get into some news and some talking points and no, no more about my, uh, sickness. Number one, <coughs> I'm alive. Stargirl has finished season three filming, so that's exciting. I think sometimes that's the show we forget because it always kind of premieres at the awkward time. We're not sure when it's going to air, um, because they just started reviewing shows, and congratulations. We're getting season three of Superman and Lois, fellas. We're getting season three. Awesome. How does that I'm make very you? very excited to see that news. Um, yes. Um, and then we're getting season nine of The Flash. And that makes me happy, because I will say The Flash's quality is coming back. You know, it dipped... COVID didn't help it. It kind of, COVID kind of ruined the flash for like two seasons. Um, but that show still just has like a special place in my heart. And about a season and a half of that, I got to catch up on. Yeah. So, you know, that, that it's still going to be around, like, just brings me joy. Like, anytime I'm watching it and I hear that theme music kick in and it comes on, I'm just like, oh, it's like, it's this comfort for me. So I'm glad it's still there. Um, what about you, Levi? How do you feel on The Flash? You know, I am about four or five seasons behind, so that <sighs> one, I am a, a little indifferent on at this point, but I am trying to work my through way through the uh, Cicada season, so. Cicada season was not bad, but then they did something in the mid of it, and I was kind of like, ugh, why'd you have to go that way? Um... But I like the idea of the cicada season. Um, and, uh, but I'm glad it's still there. The next thing is they've announced a Riddler Year One comic. It's going to tie into the Riddler from Matt Reeves, the Batman. Did you guys see that announcement? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm interested to, I'm interested to see that because I, I assume that because this is the reveal of the Riddler is when he kills the mayor, um, and I and and you there's stuff that he did in the prequel novel. I've heard snippets about. Oh, uh, speaking of the prequel the novel, Riddler, I finally got my. Oh, Riddler. did you? I haven't read it yet. I was on back order from Amazon. It showed up. So I'm gonna oh, try to awesome. that thing this week. Keep going, James. Right. Um, well, it, so I'm I'm assuming Riddler, this Riddler year one is from from where we leave off in the movie, uh, and and for a little while, it, it, it'll be nice to to see where a person who is you know becoming the character on screen pictures where they're character is going to go from there. 
I think the thing that has me really excited with the Riddler Year One is that Paul Dano is writing it himself. That's awesome. Yeah, he, exactly. He's a talented dude. That's what I mean. Like he he got to portray the Riddler. He gets to be, and now he gets to write the next year in uh, in comic format. So, James, you know how like, I asked you earlier today, like, why is it so cold? And your response was, because we live in Ohio. <laughs> yes. I think it was yesterday. I was, like, by myself, and I was turning the fireplace on. And just out of no reason, I started doing, like, the Riddler speech from the Batman, where he's like, it was so cold. Every winter, one of the babies died. The poor parts. <laughs> and I'm like, why am I just doing this to myself in the house? Like... <laughs> I lose my mind from being sick. I'm like, <clears throat> all right. All right. So, that's that's a little dark, stuck in solitary over there. I mean, yeah. So speaking of the Batman, let's talk, guys. So first of all, Matt Reeves did an interview, and I, I shared that with you, James, where he was talking about that prisoner. Uh, the Riddler's friend being the person who will be the Joker. And he was describing how he wanted to go back with the idea of like uh, more inspired from Conrad Veidt's The Man Who Laughs um, about being someone who being born with a, a damage so they have a permanent smile. And I'm like, okay, cool. I, I'm like what he's saying. Matt Reeves released the scene of, like, the interrogation talk between Batman and Joker a couple of days ago. And uh, I'll let Levi go first as our guest on his thoughts. Then James and I will go last. I mean, I was super excited to see it, and I enjoyed it. Um, definitely the shades of Mindhunter and a bit of Hannibal Lecter, like Reeves had talked about hyping it up. Um, Barry Keegan as the Joker just intrigues me. Um, he's quickly becoming one of my favorite actors, so uh, I was excited to see it. What What did you think about the scene and, and everything? Um, I'm glad he cut it. I think it would have really slowed down a very well-paced movie. Um, I'm also glad he didn't hold on for it for too long so we could all see it. Um, but I, it made sense to me why it was cut because it was very good, but it wasn't necessary. It would have been kind of just out of place in the the movie. I, I think I think people I think some people out there would the 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 only thing they would take away from that if it was in the movie is complaining that the Joker's already been locked up in Arkham Asylum. Where's that story? <laughs> yeah, you, you'd, you'd get that. You'd get those complaints constantly. I have a theory on that. But James, what are your thoughts on the scene? Um, so I do enjoy the actor. I was very interested to see more of what there was. Um, the premise of what Joker was supposed to be basing it off of that uh, that character and with the permanent smile. I mean, taking it back to the inspiration was a really great concept. Um, and then, and then we see the thing and he's like, it's, it's like his head is scarred all over. He's got tufts of green hair in places all over his head. And then his face, I mean, I don't know if deformed or mangled is is the more appropriate term. He's um, grotesque. Like, yeah, he, grotesque. He looks, he looks worse than the third version of the Joker in Gotham. Yeah. I think grotesque is the best word for it. Um, I think their interaction was, was great. Um, I think there's a couple of bits in there. Like uh, I watched it a couple of times and then I saw somebody post that the Joker uh, takes a paperclip. Yeah. 
So oh, I was God. like, so when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome. Um, Here, okay, so here's my thought. I thought about what Matt Reed was talking about, about everyone's not yet who they are. Right. So my working theory right now is that when Batman met this serial killer, he was the Red Hood. And he fell into the chemicals. And if you look, his body looks like a person who fell and got chemically burnt. Yeah. And that yep. may, and he's healing. So my thought is a lot of his mangled skin, like his nails, his hair, all this is because he's healing. And we know, like, state law is if someone's in any kind of state hospital, they have the medical care has to be met. So they're you know, they're gonna take care of him and heal him and everything. So my thought was the last time Batman met this guy, he was just a serial killer and he was the Red Hood and he's healing after falling in his in the acid. And that when he would emerge, he would then emerge and become the Joker. And he would have a different look. And that's kind of my headcanon about it. Because I don't want this grotesque Joker. I mean, we got that look on Gotham. You know, that was one thing I loved about where they were going with Leto. Was a very clean looking Joker minus the tattoos. You know, and the grill. And we were supposed to get that story. But that's neither here nor there. But... You know, like back to how Nicholson was a, a kind of clean Joker. Um, I like that he being born with like the the smile, and that can be done without being this grotesque hatchet face looking thing. You know? Yeah, I mean he 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 does look like a slasher movie serial killer, so. like something you'd see when somebody gets their mask, where the killer gets his mask ripped off. Um, but that's kind of like my, my head cannon kind of at the moment is he's healing from his acid trip. Yeah. yeah. But his acting and the interaction was spot on. Like I, I made, I had heard that he was supposed to be a cameo in it and all this. So like, like I said before, before we saw the Batman, uh, I made sure that Jania watched Eternals. Because we, she had wanted to see it already, but I knew that he was in that. That's something that she could watch quite easily with him. And then when we saw it, she was like, "Who was that guy?" I was like, "It's like the guy from Eternals who played Druid." She's like, "Oh, interesting," you know. So she was like, "All right, I'm in." So. I mean, he is very good. It's always, it's always. Uh... Compelling to see a, a very good actor portray portray a character, especially a character as iconic as the Joker. Yeah, I just liked that it also kills Brian's th- theory, which just makes me laugh. So. <laughs> see? Calvin up love laughing about it. <laughs> hey, we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. But all right, fellas. So, this week's episode of Guess Who Doesn't Live with Lana Anymore, starring Mr. Cortez and Lana Lang. (laughs) It's our favorite character of Kyle. That's why we watch the show, right, guys? He's such compelling television. Oh, yeah, that's why I tune in. 
Kyle was a firefighting drunk. That's why I watch Superman and Lois. Right, Jania? Yep. Yep, Kyle. Everybody's favorite man. But no, seriously, we don't watch it because Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll, let's let's take the episode from the start, man. What'd you guys uh, just overall thoughts on the episode, Levi? Uh, just overall, yeah. Uh, the moments in the episode that were uh, really good were some of the best I think in the season. Some of the little nods they did. Uh, one sequence there, kind of in the middle, was great. Um, there was some stuff that really dragged on for me in this episode and had me going, can we get back to the story now, though? And I want to know what those are here in a minute. Oh, we'll get to them. All right. <laughs> James, what, what's your overall thought? Um, You know, kind of a decent episode. Not entirely too much happens. Uh, I mean, you know... Things do happen, um, but, like, a good chunk of the episode is Lana and Kyle, and they're just exchanging dialogue, discussing the um, the debate coming up. And, obviously, it's entwined about their relationship, because that's what they're preparing for. Um, but, uh... I'm interested to see what happens next. Yeah. Is, is what I'll say. It was it was kind of a nice. I mean, it was a good episode, but it was kind of just like bridging from last week's last episode we got to um what we're gonna have for the rest of the season because we've only got probably what thirteen episodes. I want fifteen I, episodes. I, I want to say it's fifteen. Uh, I can't remember. I feel like that's what I heard when I listened to that one interview with Todd um, back before season two really started. So, How many did we get in season one? Was it, I think it was 15, right? Okay. Sounds right. Well, I like this episode. There were some beats and was kind of like, ugh. But I thought, you know, not a lot happened action-wise. But I thought there was a lot of good setup and story and building the characters. So do you guys want to take it character? Or do you want to take it by like uh, B? Because I, I, I think it would be easier to just go by characters. That works for me. So we'll start off with <sighs> Might as well start off with Lana and Kyle. Since I... Yeah. Kind of spoiled what they what they were going on. <laughs> they're the most attached. Get them out of the way. Yeah, what they have going on. And they're also the most attached from everything else. So yeah, that that helps a lot too. Um, so Kyle shows up, and we find out that he's not living at the firehouse. He got himself a little sublet apartment. <coughs> Hopefully, it's not over top of the bar where the girl he cheated on was. That would suck. That would not be wise. Um, you know, because why would you bring someone around your relationship to hang out with the person that you like, that you cheated on with? That doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Am I right? I mean, I hope that would be, that would be too obvious for drama. I hope that they, they don't go that way. Yeah. Like, Hey, be friends with the person I cheated on you with, but whatever. Well, yeah. You know, that's not like, that's going to come up somewhere, but, um, and Lana's preparing her. Kyle's there to get the girls, um, but I only saw one. And he's going to take them to breakfast, and he sees Lana preparing for her debate. So Kyle tries to help coach Lana in questions that would come up for the debate. And I think he does a good job. You know, he, he asks some questions, and, he you know, one question being that he, he asks her is, um, you know, how are you going to keep scandal out of Smallville? You can't keep scandal out of your house. And she kind of, I don't know, breaks character, so to speak. You know, not a, and she says, it wasn't me who brought scandal into my home. And I think she says it was, did she say it was you? Or did she say it was my husband? I can't remember. Um, I think she was still kind of addressing as the audience for the debate, but 
And then eventually she did go around to pointing it directly at him. But I think she started from uh, from the debate standpoint and then directed it towards him in the end. You know, and she, and, but Kyle makes the point of that's something that's going to come up because the moderator's the mayor's hunting buddy. So. Um, I think I think the the episode or the scenes that they had together were pretty good. Um, I think they handled it both very well. Um, she said that she wanted him to help because he's been there all along. Um, and, and they have a good rapport with the campaign. Uh, they do have that interaction where she kind of blows up on him. Um, but he accepts it because that's what she needed to do to kind of get past it and work on what she needed to work on all the questions that they had. Um, so yeah, they, it was a very well written interaction. Levi, your thoughts. You're you're a big Kyle fan. Uh, I mean, I can't say the scenes weren't well written. I've got to agree with uh, with that. They were well done. To me, in an episode that was already a little slower paced, it those ones in particular just felt like they dragged the pace down even more when there potentially was bigger fish to fry in the episode. I can agree with that. Um, I can highly agree with that. Yeah, we do get a few big things in this episode from different characters. Um, it was, I mean, if you think about it, like there's, they're not in it that much. So I almost kind of curious what the next episode would be if those could have been scenes in the next episode. Yeah, like a way of combining. Well, hope. Well, like I said, hopefully this is a good episode that that uh, an episode that bridges that we get a lot of information for a lot of different people, and then it it was like it was it was a very good setup in this episode for things that are to come. True. True. So I mean. For a show that's done really well and not had uh, too much filler when it comes to the story and the pacing of that, I think, you know, I think it, it, and we'll see what happens next week, but I think it did well. I think it did what it's supposed to do mid-season here. I also think having the break that we had, you know, and then getting this episode kind of killed momentum. Yeah. I think if, if we would have gotten the last episode then watch this directly after it, I think would have helped with that kind of feeling. Um well it would certainly would have left you on a like, wow, like I kind of really want to come back. Like I want the next episode very intrigued for when when it does come back. Right. Um so the next grouping will be that John Henry returns and he's coming home from the hospital and at the beginning we see that he's being released um, and he's doing well from his injuries but he's having a little bit of memory issue and we get some flashbacks here which I thought was interesting that they they tied more tightly back that we actually see the antimatter wave coming while the wormhole is open. So John Henry and then Nat goes through the wormhole right as the antimatter wave of crisis crosses it. So I thought that was pretty interesting. The flashback scenes had me excited. I I took notes on this one because I knew you were sick. Uh, so I wanted to be able to talk a little more. And I actually have written down, nice for them to finally acknowledge crisis happened on the show. Yeah. So. Well, that was speculation we had as to how he how he got to this Earth uh, to begin with. Um, we, we had speculated that 
that crisis happened about the same time uh, that he yeah. went through. And the fact that his John Henry of the Earth had already have been something that had to have happened to him because two people from the from different Earths couldn't occupy the same Earth. Um, but poor John Henry is having like what do you get memory confusion? Because when he sees Lois, he forgets that's not his Lois. Uh, but then he's like, I, I remember now. Like, so, um, you know, he's dealing with that. And then Clark, Natalie still has issues with Clark. And he was supposed to come pick John Henry and Matt up from the hospital. But, of course, he was being Superman. And we have a second scene with them where... Nat goes off on Clark, and then John Henry and Clark talk about, you know, she needs to learn that he's a different person and everything and spend time with her. And, uh, you know, Which Clark, is why the flashback scenes were um, so important in this episode. Yes. Uh, to, to have um, Nat start to uh, come to terms with you know, Lois being around, who's not her mom, and Clark and Superman being around, who's not the one, the not not the one who killed her mother. And then the final kind of scene is Clark gets a place for John and Nat to rent and live off the farm uh, somewhere, and we see them go to it. And it's like a machine shop. It's like a garage. With uh, with an with an attached apartment, yeah, and it's a little run down and needs some fixing up. But with their skills, I think it's perfect for them. It's going to I was, give them just, a I was say with their engineering skills, yeah. <laughs> um, My first so, thought when I saw it was it's like their bunker that they would always show where he was building. His right. Suit. So right, and they're going to build him a new suit, and it was just it was nice to have him back. I like the the buddiness of John and Clark um, and that going on. So I liked having that element and um, I'm glad he's back. I I, I hope that the, the memory thing is just like for this episode because I feel like we kind of, we've already mined that emotion. Let's not drag it out anymore. You know, yeah, I'm definitely here for the the Clark and John Henry buddy scenes, though. That scene with them discussing uh, Clark's doubts that he could ever have a relationship with Matt, I thought was really. I like seeing Clark struggle as opposed to seeing Superman struggle, so that was a really good scene. At least I, I agree. I agree. Well, um, in this episode, we get. More Clark than we get Superman. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. I'm okay with that. You know, because I like both characterizations. You know, I think you need to see both sides and the way he's living and dealing with things. Um, oh, yeah, life is Clark. both of them. I'm, I'm still waiting for, you know, um, I don't know about you guys, but I wanted to ask you this if you're both still waiting for him. To Clark to confront Kyle, you know, man to man, and punch him for cheating on his best friend. You know, just throwing that out there. And I, I do it. think like an interaction with them is inevitable, I'm but just, certainly yeah. not punch him. But I think I think you would I think you would feel the 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 Superman level of disappointment directed at him. You know how he does. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I can I'm, see it happening I, at the debate. That's that's my prediction. Hey, I can dream, okay? <laughs> he just he just walks up to Kyle and goes, Whew, and Kyle just flies back. <laughs> God, but, all right. So the next grouping, I guess, would be kind of building up... Um, I guess would be the probably the boys before yeah. we get to Superman, Lois, and Allie, and the rest of the, the family. Fr- 
the fraternals. Um, the fraternals, yes. <laughs> can I just say, like, I know John's being very, or I'm, yes, John is being very protective of Candace. And like one thing I told you is, first of all, I really want to know why they changed his girlfriend between seasons and didn't just let the drug dealing girlfriend be the one whose father is the criminal in Central City. You know, like why why do we have to change to this new character that they're forcing on us? Um, but if things were flipped, I don't think Candace would be trying to protect John. I think she'd rat him out to save her skin. Oh yeah. You know, so John's taking all this heat, um, not giving up. He's going to complete school online. Uh, Smallville's football program was shut down for the rest of the season, forfeiting every game, and then they had to re-forfeit their wins. Um, and John getting a job, which I found interesting. Why not just put him to work outside in the fields of the farm? That was my thought, because I, I remember them saying, I think in season one, that Clark was taking over the farm. Right. I mean, I know like, Clark can do everything in an hour. Farm. I mean, I know he could be back there, like, Clark can do everything by himself, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I know it's fall, so there's not as much, but there's still chores that can be done on a farm that John should be doing instead of working at a grocery store. A little convenience shop, you know. I'm sure they could find something redundant for him to do on the farm. You know, go stack this uh, wood over there. Now go stack it over here. Oh, dude, I would so make my kid do that. Right. right. As punishment of chores, straight up. They're like, you know what? Now that you spent half your day stacking the wood pile on the right side of the house, I really think I liked it better on the left. Get to it. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. They even um so Jordan is at school and hears some towny hillbilly dude hustling Kansas or Kansas. Can Kansas. Jeez. They are in Kansas. I'm done. I'm done. Peace guys. Okay. Yeah, so the drug dealer who sold the uh the XK inhalers to Candace is harassing her for the money. Um, that she owes him for the ones that got confiscated. Um, she obviously didn't get to sell them. Um, and it's a lot of money, and he's threatening her, and Jordan kind of steps in between, and, and then he goes away. And then when we, uh, um, when John gets off of work, he is walking Candace home, and they get, uh, they get pulled upon by, by said drug dealer on the street. And he starts, uh, and he attacks, he takes XK, and he attacks John, and he goes to take, uh, Candace away, uh, force her into his car. Uh, this is when, J uh, Jordan is going to meet Sarah and her friend, um, what's her name, Andrea? Yep. Um, you know, Sarah's friend, who she cheated on Jordan with, who she, she wants Jordan to camp. meet and be friends with and be okay with, who is the one person she felt she could rely on about her dad cheating on her mom, who would understand about parents broken up. It's a little convoluted, and I'm like, uh, okay. And I like Jordan's uh, reasoning for agreeing to it. He's like, I got distracted trying to protect your girlfriend. <laughs> he was like, yeah. I agree to it. Um, and he, he hears them, uh, he hears them being attacked and he, he runs in to save the day, which is actually pretty cool. You know, you got super powered person versus this XK person, this person, on, this guy on XK. Dude, super boy begins. Yup. I cheered when he uppercut him onto his car. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't throw him 30 feet. At least he, <laughs> at least he uppercut him and sent him flying 30 feet. <laughs> when when he heard John yelling Jordan, he took off. Like, I was like excited. 
and like the way he like had the hood up and head down, you know. And then the way he ran away at the end gave me some small bill vibes. I was like, I looked at Jinnya and I was like, man, I love him. You know, Superman runs away like that. Maybe because I spent 10 seasons in Smallville. <laughs> You're watching him go. <laughs> <laughs> I also loved, like you said, with the hood up and all that, it gave me um, Superman Earth 1 vibes. The cover of that. Yes. Th- that's what I thought. I was like, that is like just such a cool modern Superman look right there from a recent comic. Yes, I loved it. And what I found interesting, though, is when Jordan gets back and he's going to go meet Sarah, like, he's got, his knuckles are a little bloody. Um, and he's got a little, you know, cut and scrape on him from fighting another super-powered person. And he ends up just going home, because and then John sees him. He's like, what was I going to say? How do I explain this to her? And then he it's, calls him out and says, why didn't you tell me it was Candace? You know, he's like, that you're trying to protect. Like, you don't think I'd understand or something? He's like, why didn't you just tell me? Yeah, I'm a little concerned that uh, he didn't figure it out on his own. Because how many people in that town would his brother be trying to protect over drugs? So um, I'm surprised that Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Clark and Lois didn't figure it out immediately. Yeah, that's the one part of this drug storyline that's starting to, like, you guys aren't really trying that hard to figure that out, are you? <laughs> that right. that, and the fact that, they, you know, last episode they rip him about drugs and XK and all this, but they don't even bring up, like, you're half Kryptonian. Like, this could have had no effect on you. This could have had major effect on you more than anybody else. Like, the effects that that this inhalers could have done to him could have been radically different than anyone else. You know, they don't even really bring that up into the discussion. No, they haven't. That's been annoying. Um, the other thing is, one thing I did appreciate is when jo- Jonathan asks Candace um, how much she owes the guy, and she says... More than we got. Because I, I like when they talk in roundabouts and not in exact numbers in shows and stuff where they have to put prices on things. I, I don't know. I just always like that better than trying to put a finite price. Because sometimes it doesn't always age as well. Because, I mean, honestly, honestly, guys, you know, I'm not into, you know, street drugs or whatever. Um, but if someone was selling inhalers that gave you powers like Superman. I'm pretty sure that whatever one inhaler dose would go for would be a lot of money. Um Yeah, I don't I don't see the people around Smallville actually being able to afford that. The high school kids around Smallville. <laughs> yeah. Like you would have to sell it like you'd have to start like diluting it to down to like okay this is only worth an hour and it's like 600 bucks or a grand you know yeah how do you put a price on superpowers exactly even temporary superpowers exactly in a world where everybody wants to be superman like so anyways that's my one thing about the whole drug thing is how it's like yeah man this guy just got some more inhalers where are these kids getting this money in this town that was drying up that Morgan Edge had to save them last season? We're not hearing about, you know, any crime sprees. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because you know that mining operation is is still banking big bucks. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all shut down. So Exactly. Um, so there's, there's, the, there's the boys in this episode. Can we also say that when uh, the Clark and Lois needed to communicate with the boys, they... Uh, Rochambeau did. And apparently Clark always loses. Apparently. I mean, that's how it is. You always lose to your wife. <coughs> right, Yunia? Yep, you shaking her head. It's true. I lose. Um, so now that brings us to Clark 
Lois, Lucy, Anderson, Allie, Chrissy, and Sam. I was like, I know there's somebody else forgetting. Everyone um, else. So Chrissy, my favorite and not favorite person on the show, returns. Um, and we find that Allie is calling together her some of her members and there's Anderson and they're gonna go to the mines and basically ascend. Okay, awesome. They're gonna cross over. And basically they pick up Chrissy and they make her put on a hazmat suit. And those helmets look pretty sweet, not gonna lie. And they go and we see that there's other members already in the in there with their suits on so we don't know who they are. And while in the mind, people are starting to get sucked up and they're like getting crushed and screaming and pulled through. And when Chrissy starts to get pulled through, um, she screams and Clark shows up, saves her, saves Allie. Um, so other people are getting sucked in and then we see Anderson takes the, um, medallion and goes through. And that's the big, oh, moment of that scene. Um, we don't know if Lucy made it because earlier Lucy sent a cryptic text, basically someone she's saying goodbye to Lois and Sam. And, um, yeah, I'll let you guys take it from here. Yeah. Uh, the super save was pretty awesome. Yes. Um, being able to save a few people from the, uh, from being crushed by the, um, uh, I don't know, Event Horizon by the portal. <laughs> that, I mean, the save itself was cool. Um, I think the thing that stuck out to me the most was that music they had for it was very uh, Zimmer-esque. Um, so it kind of reminded me of uh, Superman trying to pull away from the, um, the Phantom Zone, get, uh, the Black Zero getting sucked back into the Phantom Zone. Mm, exactly cool. the same thought I had, yeah. Um, it was an interesting uh, build up to that, though. The hazmat suits, Chrissy, like everyone slowly walking towards their impending death, it seems like. <laughs> Willingly. And then, you know, jumping ahead, Allie says, you know, later that she, has, she wants to cross over still. But how? Because well, we seen... were told uh, we were told by Anderson because he came back from the other world, like he went under just like Ali did. This time, probably more voluntarily, but he went under and he said that Ali from that world said, "Come here now." Yeah, and the interesting thing is, you have to have the pendant to like physically cross over. And now both sides of that are on the other side. Is it both, or did he just take the pendant that he had, that he got from Bizarro? Does Allie still have her pendant? I thought she had both of them, because she was bringing both of them over. I mean, I would assume she had both of them, but he only, I only, I think he I'll have to go back and watch one. it. Well, he had one, and she had hers, but I thought she had them together. Somehow, I don't know. I'll have to watch it again. I don't know. I mean, I think I think that he gave her that. Uh, and he showed her the... I, I don't know. Maybe he handed it over. Maybe he didn't. I need to watch it again. Well, I don't think they ever showed him, like, hand it over. Like, he, he goes to her because Superman's interested in her, saying she's bad. And then, and then uh, he shows her the... That he has the the medallion from uh, the amulet from the other from the Bizarro world, and uh, and then we start this episode up, and he's waking up from from the other world. So I think they cut right over they they cut right over that. I mean that's all we can assume, I guess.
that's the one thing with the storyline this year. It's uh, very unclear how any of the, the actual stuff is going to work. And I'm sure it'll be revealed, but it, it makes the scenes like this, the cave rescue and the aftermath, it makes them a little confusing to understand what actually happened. Right, because, I mean, so far all we've got, when when the only characters we've had who's come into contact with their other self is Superman. And they talked about how them being in proximity of one another was powering was powering them up or powering Superman up. So, I mean, that's really the only hint we got as to the amulet or anything else. Because we've just seen it. We've seen it with her. We saw it with Bizarro. We saw that Bizarro took it from her on the other Earth and came over to this Earth. That's about it. Mm. I'm intrigued by where this is going. So, what do you guys think of the Lucy part to this episode? Anybody, you go first. (laughs) I will read you exactly what I had uh, written down for this. I said, the Lucy storyline is meh. And then as I was typing that, the uh, twist ending happened. And I literally, in all caps, wrote down until the end. So, (laughs) the whole thing... The Lucy storyline this season, I thought, started out really good and really interesting. And then, like, what happened in this one was kind of boring until she reveals the twist at the end where she drugged her dad. I knew it. To steal his DOD badge, I think. You know, he's probably, yeah. she's probably going to try and break Allie out. Because I'm sure she was... can just walk into a Department of Defense facility and open the cell and take her, take her out, you know. <laughs> as soon as they showed him with that cup, I was like, you poor man. This is why I only drink things from cans and bottles. Okay? You know? Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm picky. I don't trust even my wife. She makes me tea. She might be trying to slip something in there. She might be trying to take me down. <laughs> trying. <laughs> I don't know, James. If Suddenly you don't hear from me for a while. Check my coffee cup. Check your coffee cup. (laughs) I think if it's been a while, she might have gotten rid of the evidence. Yeah, probably. (laughs) But, yeah, I was like, oh, man. It's like if I die under suspicious circumstances, don't trust anyone. Not Jania. Yeah. Not even Jania. Especially not Jania. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But, yeah, that was... I do think it's interesting that you want people to see the truth or what all accept this, but the only way you can get it is to force them by tricking them and drugging them into it, not letting them willingly be a participant. That just seems wrong for your truth selling with side. Hey, I want you to feel this. Make it happen. I know it's on the CW, so they've kind of had to beat around the bush with it, but, like, I would love to have seen them, like, flesh out the cult aspect of this way more. I agree. Um, Because this actress and the way they're doing it, like, she is creepy. There's a creepiness to her, like, even for, like, you know, just cult leaders in general. Like, um, side tangent. I was re-watching some episodes of Boy Meets World the past two days. And, like, one of my favorite episodes is when Sean tries to join the center, which is basically (laughs) like a cult. And just the guy, you know, who's the leader. And, yeah, that's a comical version. But even then, like, that type of mindset of a person. uh, Did you watch Boy Meets World, Levi? I know exactly which episode you're talking about. So, Second tangent. So I decided to watch some key episodes from Girl Meets World. Like, I was like, you know, because I I seen, like, one or two episodes before. I was like, man, I'm going to watch the ones where, like, the previous characters really pop up. And I was like, man, I always love Mr. Turner. So I watched the first episode with Mr. Turner in Girl Meets World. And it mirrors the first episode of Mr. Turner in Boy Meets World. But what's neat is the teacher that they bring in to teach English is teaching the students The Dark Knight Returns. 
Yeah, I, like, I remember watching that. Yeah, I was like, okay, that's dope. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting episode. <laughs> it was, it, it was, and it was just cool to see Mr. Turner back to you. But all right, back to this episode. The whole cult leader thing, I think, yeah. Um, did you guys ever remember the show that came out called Cult that was on the CW? I don't remember that one. It only no, I remember one the following. On the Fox. following was, dude, the following season one was great. Season two, I dropped off. It, it got too crazy. Um, yeah. Cult was like a TV, I'm trying to remember it. It had a bunch of quote unquote, um, CW players, like people that you'll look them up, like, oh, yeah, I seen you. Um, and I can't remember if it was before or right after the Vampire Diaries because it had one of the people from that show. Um, but it was like about a TV series about a cult, but it was like tied into like a real cult. It was an interesting idea. It only lasted one season. Um, the main dude who was like the cult leader or whatever was the one that played the Clock King on Arrow. Um, so it was interesting. But, well, that guy is a good actor. Yeah, he, he is a good creeper. Yeah, yeah. I think he could play that. I think he could pull that role off pretty pretty well. But any other final thoughts for this episode? Into Oblivion. The only other thing I touch on uh, the scenes with Lois and Clark. Uh, these two have to be kind of the best pairing I've seen of the characters in a long time. And every time they just have a scene with the two of them, it's one of my favorite scenes in the episode. And they had a couple in this one, so that was always nice. I agree. Um, first of all, I'm going to go on a tangent here. I hate the Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder, Lois and Clark dynamic. People say that's their favorite Lois. That's their favorite Lois and Clark. No. Not mine, because they never had a really good relationship. She loved Superman, and then kind of like Clark, and then, you know, there's that whole muckiness of him giving up her his powers, blah, 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 blah. No, she was never really good to Clark. They never had a chance to cultivate a relationship, okay? I hate, hate Bosworth as Lois. <coughs> <coughs> That's on record. Um, you know, and then we've had some other, you know, couples that have had a chance to try to cultivate and show a really good relationship, but these two, nail it. I mean, they have it that says that they are this couple, and they've had history together, and I, I love it. Like, it's the best part of just... Really helping ground the series. Yeah, I just buy it when they're on screen together that they are, that like this is who Superman fell in love with and she fell in love with Clark and not Superman. And it's just such a nice change. <clears throat> and like the scene where he's comforting her on the couch is just so nice. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, I mean, the episode last season, I'm sure it's on, on record when we were talking about it last season, the, the flashback episode where Tal was in his mind and we got to see the, the past and the history, um, and, and the way that the, those two got together is one of the best episodes of the season. Um, they, they have an amazing relationship in this, in this series and, uh, you know, I liked the scene where they're on the couch at the end of the episode when uh, Jonathan comes home and where you're, where have you been? Uh, I promised to walk Candace home and Clark says very stern store the house, anything else you need our permission. Um, and then Lois has, you know, her like, that's fine, but you know, there's a limit to how long it can go on. Um, very nice scene. Very good discussion between them. They're, yeah, they're they're yeah they're they're so good um, together. I don't know if I would say she's my <laughs> that she's my favorite Lois Lane. She's not my favorite Lois Lane, but them two together are are fantastic. 
she, she's in the top three. Without sitting down and having to like etch it, you know, in stone here. She's in the top three. I'll just say that. Yeah, she's doing great. I don't dislike her in, in any way. I, I, I want to, yeah, I, you know, that's make that clear that that's uh, that's not the case. I don't dislike her in any way. Um, like I said, it was a good episode. Um, it was a little little slower, but there was kind of a lot of setup coming back from from the break that we had. Uh, we we got. We had Bizarro before, and now what is what's what's the ultimate end game for the rest of the season? And that's what I'm excited to see happen. We got that twist at the end where Lucy said she was the failsafe. Um, you know, there there's more plans in the works, and I, I want to see them. All right, fellas. Any other final thoughts, Levi? Uh, no, I th- nothing else for me. All right. Well, hey, thanks for being here, Levi. Go ahead and let people know where they can catch you online. Drop your thoughts, your opinions. You're always fun to to chat with on Twitter. And you know, we. Oh yeah, wait, hold on. We didn't have our quick conversation. Levi has an addiction similar to mine. <laughs> Which one? I have many. <laughs> um. So, Levi's been indulging in buying McFarlane figures. More? What's some new ones that you got, Levi? <coughs> uh, you know, I actually, uh, the t- two newest ones I got are the Batman and Superman from The Dark Knight Returns. So. Nice. Um, I guess you could also tack on the Pattinson, Batman, and Riddler as well. But those are a few weeks older. It has become quite a problem, and my wife is unhappy, so. (laughs) Junia has not crashed that threshold yet. But within the past month, I bought The Flash from Zack Snyder's Justice League. I got, um, let's see, I got the Black Suit variant, Animated Superman, Dark Knight Returns Superman, Solomon got the Red Hood from Gotham Knights. I feel like I'm missing one. Yeah, I knew you were going to ask, so I went through, and I just, since we're just talking Superman on here, I went through and uh, figured out which Superman McFarlane's I have. I have both of the animated Supermans. I have the Action Comics 1000, both of the Cavill variants. Yep. Both of the Superman Unchained, uh, Death Metal, Rebirth, Dark Knight Returns, and I have the Solar Suit Superman on pre-order. So I have the on pre-order the Solar Suit. Um, you talking? Is that the one you're talking about with the beard? Superman yep. last one. Yeah, can't wait for that one. I have the Superman fighting. The Batman where he's like Doomsday. The Devastator one, yeah. Yep, I have that one. Oh, I just, I bought Steppenwolf. That's the other one I bought recently. I bought, I bought the Justice League Steppenwolf. I've been very, sadly, and it is sad, I've been very good at not buying all the McFarlane figures. <laughs> but I well, want I just, them. I just pre-ordered the John Kent Superboy. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to be better going forward. But my intention when they first started coming out was I'll get any Superman one and then I'll get the Zack, uh, Zack Snyder ones. And that quickly has I, not been the case. So uh, I do really want to finish my Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, collection, though. Yeah, um, I do I'm, have the I do have the the gold edition armored dark side and the um uh the the yellow and or the uh blue suit uh exclusive superman the target exclusive superman. I need um, I haven't gotten the the black suit yet. I need Batman and Cyborg. And then I guess technically I would need Wonder Woman from Wonder Woman 1984. 
since they didn't make a Zack Snyder Justice League Wonder Woman figure. So it was that, just that. That's the one I have for my Wonder Woman in it. But I think the only Zack Snyder one I am missing is the Unmasked Batman one. Mm. So I've got both Dark Sides, uh, Steppenwolf, Aquaman. I've got both Flashes now that both of them are out. Uh, you win. My wife, I, I literally, I'm sitting next to a tote in my office where I have them next to me, so. I, I also, uh, I bought plastic, and I bought a binder, and I started keeping all the cards in plastic like I did when I was a child with my trading card collection. <laughs> nice. Bye. I have been considering doing that as well. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with them, and I was just like, why don't I just get plastic and have them display and flip through? And my kids think it's the coolest thing ever. Like, oh, I can look through all that. I'm like, yeah. Heck yeah, that's awesome. So now we have talked to McFarlane Toys because we are men in our 30s playing with action figures. And you know what? It's cool. <laughs> just just <laughs> trying to cool. recreate our youth. <laughs> Right. Now we can end the episode. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Good night. <clears throat> All right. So, where can people talk uh, with you online, Levi? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Round Superman. James, where can people find you? And we're out of uh, time. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, see ya. <laughs> But yeah, James, where can people uh, chat with you? Who's Chris Warren? Um, I'm on Twitter at SupermanRed underscore KR. And you can find me just at Krypton Report. So remember, everybody, check out our Patreon. We uh, are getting ready to do, I put an announcement up. Um, we're going to do some cool new stuff. With Patreon, um, we want to give five episodes a month of different styles. So check it out: one dollar a month for Patreon. We have a cool commentary coming up soon, and remember, an awesome commentary, a new show that'll be interesting to talk about. One of our random discussion episodes. Yes, and that's what's going to be fun about the Patreon. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right. For $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show. Like movie commentaries and and whatever else comes out out of our podcast. So check it out. Patreon.com slash Krypton Report. But also, if you love Superman and DC Comics, please listen to the following. The Last Sons of Krypton, Superman the Animated Podcast, Holy Batcast, The Geek of Steel, Digging for Kryptonite, The Aspiring Kryptonian, The All-Star Superfan Podcast, and Superboy the Legacy Podcast. Enjoy.